we paste that in and we can indeed see where our flag actually was hidden. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Thank goodness for blur effects so you can't actually see how many dishes I need to clean. If you're new here, my name's Ash, I'm 27, I'm a cybersecurity enthusiast and on this channel we do all things try hack me walkthroughs, write-ups on our way to cybersecurity professionalism. On today's video we're going through another try hack me room corridor. If you need any links, timestamps or anything like that, see the description below otherwise let's go. All right, I'm on try hack me and let's just look up our corridor room. So looking at our tags, we've got security, IDOR and web. So if we look up IDOR, we've got insecure direct object references. So this is what's known as a type of access control vulnerability, which arises when an application uses user supplied input to access objects directly. And these type of vulnerabilities are most commonly associated with horizontal privilege escalation, but they can also also arise in relation to vertical privilege escalation. So some examples that you may have seen similar things in other challenges, but it's like in the URL, you can change the customer number. And this is sort of a hint towards like what we're gonna be doing in this room. All right, so let's get started. Can you escape the corridor? Ooh. So we've got a easy box here. Let's go ahead and start our machine. While that's booting, let's read the description. You have found yourself in a strange corridor. Can you find your way back to where you came? In this challenge, you will explore potential IDOR vulnerabilities. Examine the URL endpoints you access as you navigate the website and note the hexadecimal values you find. They look an awful like a hash, don't they? This could help you uncover website locations you were not expected to access. Great, so in typical CTF fashion, we've got a few hints in here looking for hashes and these hexadecimal values. So we'll see how that sort of plays in once our box is live. All right, let's start by getting on the VPN, confirming we have access. Let's see if we can ping our box, which we can. So let's start with a simple Rust scan. So straight away we can find a port 80. Let's go check that out in Firefox. And if we run just another scan, see if there's anything else against that uh, port 80. Great. So looking at our website, looks like just a JPEG with some hovering over the doors. We hit control U, we can see the source and we have a static image like we saw and we're using this map tag. I don't think I've ever used the map tag in HTML with an area target. And here are the hash looking hexadecimal values that we heard about in our hint. Yeah, I don't really know what, is that like coordinates? Yeah, so maybe that's how the link is over like the whole door maybe. So if we hover over and we click one of the doors, we can see it takes us to this value and it's an empty room. If we look at that, we've just got an empty room JPEG. And this is gonna be the case with all of the rooms that we have a look around. Um, there's nothing of interest in any of the rooms. So the focus, as the hint says, is on these hash values. So we can go ahead and copy all of these values out of here. And just going back over our end map scan, uh, looks like there's nothing of interest to my knowledge anyway. I'm not sure. I think I have seen, is that a module in Python perhaps? Uh, so that's just, I guess, the web server, but I'm not entirely sure. Let's set up a hashes file and paste in all of our hashes from the website. So there's a total of 13 hashes that we've got to figure out what to do with. So a few tools, but let's use Hashcat and we'll just put it into auto detect mode. So we're not gonna specify a hash because we don't know the hash type. So hopefully Hashcat can tell us the hash type of our hashes. Am I saying hashes a lot? And we'll just use the classic rock you text list and we'll see how that goes. Alrighty, so it's given us some predictions. Uh, looks like MD5, and that's usually a good one to start off with. So we can use the dash M mode, so we can put that into MD5 hash. And let's hit a dash O and put it out into a cracked file. Great, so that took no time at all. So we've got our status as cracked. And if we cat out our cracked file that we put hashcat's output into, I can see here each hash and its value. So it looks like they are just the hashes of decimals one through to 13. So we can go back to this web application. With the knowledge we have, can we see anything by just looking at the values? So the actual decimal numbers aren't there. If we go back to IDOR, this is sort of cluing us into what we need to do. Since we've got these hashes for one through to 13, why don't we try and generate a hash in the 
same hashing algorithm of MD5 and see if we can find anything else. So for example, let's echo out the number 14 and pipe that through to MD5 sum. Uh, but just remember, we need to use the dash N to get rid of that new line, which will actually change the MD5. So just for an example, if we do it without the new line and with the new line, we can see that the number 14 gets two very different hashes because they're two different inputs. Um, but for the sake of ours, we need to take this MD5 hash and we can go test just like the other rooms. Can we go to a file like so? No luck. So 14 was going up. So why don't we try and go the other way? So we'll do the same, but this time instead of going 14, let's try zero. We paste that in and we can indeed see where our flag actually was hidden. So we can go back to try hack me. We can paste that in and we get our room completed. So great, that was corridor. So it ended up being a pretty easy room. Spending a little bit of time understanding exactly what the room is based around gives me a better idea of what direction to go into when I'm in the room. So that was corridor. Thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. I appreciate you getting through to now. Feel free to do all that YouTube stuff, like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate it. Up on the screen, you're gonna find my previous Try Hack Me walkthrough MD2 PDF, which was a really cool room breaking into another web application. So if you enjoyed this room, go check that out and you can learn some more about XSS and SSRF. So if that piques your interest, go check that out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.